you as an organization might be starting on your security journey or you might be some way down your, sec uh, your security uplift, but you're not exactly sure of what to do. And with Microsoft's umbrella of uh, features and uh, softwares, it's very difficult to know what step should be next and what is the impact of it? And will it help you eventually go to where you eventually want to, uh, your, your final destination? And, and as Johnny mentioned before as well, uh, there are very different type of attackers as well. And depending upon your organization, uh, your priorities might be different. Some organization might be prioritizing uh, improvements in data. Some might be identity, even though those two might be linked. And it becomes very difficult to have a look at them. So a quick poll. Uh, so again, this I think the diagram came before. So this is the entire basically suit of Microsoft features. And Microsoft tends to categorize them uh, under identities, data, applications, infrastructure, and devices. And you might want to improve your posture towards one particular way, but you might be thinking, A, you might be spreading yourself too thin. Or if you're improving towards one, how do you improve towards the other as well? And it's very difficult to get a top-down view of the entire thing. And that is where Secure Score comes in. So it's basically the entire security posture distilled into one particular number, where it can give you an overall idea of where you are on your security journey. And at the same time, when you take a step back, it also allows you to see, OK, what, have you, what you have implemented and what you might need to implement, and what will be the impact of that. Uh, it can uncover different avenues which you did not think were there. And it can guide you through those ones as well. And that's an important thing which most people don't realize. It can help you build a roadmap. So it can show you, okay, this feature is important. We want to set uh, starters on this first. This is low impact. Let's go to the low hanging fruit and then go towards the more complicated ones. And you can track those changes, which is very important like, to, to, show, to show to management. So say, okay, we've been making continual improvements. So let me go over how the secure score actually runs. So to go to secure score, you need to go to security.microsoft.com. And there you have all these different portals. But secure score is over here Oops. on this part. So if you click into secure score, you go into the particular portal as well. And here you can see it's categorized in uh, three different ways. The overall secure score, uh, the history, and then suggested improvements. So let's go into the score first. So this is your total score. So the total amount is basically calculated as the aggregate of all the features available inside your tenant. So if you enable all the features available to you, you'll get to that maximum score. Is that possible? Highly unlikely. Uh, if you go possibly for 100%, you might not be able to get into your tenant. And the other score that you have is like how far along you are uh, on, that, on that journey. And it's broken down into the same categories as Microsoft categorizes its feature suit. So identity, data, applications, infrastructure. An important thing to note, uh, I will mention this later on, but I will mention this, uh, possibly mention this right now. So currently this is a number, but in preview right now, this will change to a percentage. So a lot of people realize, okay, so a number doesn't really mean that much when it doesn't have context. So to help go over that, uh, I think Microsoft is thinking about changing it to a percentage. So you're 37 percent of you've enabled 37 percent of the features or the improvements that Microsoft given to you to improve uh, in that particular uh, field. And the next one is uh, history. So this shows you. Uh, what your secure score is over the last 30 days, over the last 90 days, and so on and so forth. This is an important tool as well. So you can see the improvements that you're making and how it's overall, how it's affecting where you're going. An important thing to note is there's some drops here. And you might be wondering why. Uh, there are cases where it happened. So say there's an improvement a suggestion to have MFA on all admin accounts. Sometimes you might need to disable them. So you say you're working on a project which requires an admin account and that legacy application doesn't support modern auth. So you need to disable it. And you can see the chart goes down. And once you've enabled it, it comes back up as well. And this is an important feature. 
So a lot of times you have a security uplift program, say you set up MFA on all admin accounts. And this project comes up, you disable one, and then you forget about it, forget about turning it back on. This allows you to say, okay, wait a minute, it went down, why is that the case? And you can remediate that as well. And the last part is the suggestions that Microsoft gave you. So these are suggestions uh, to improve your secure score. And these are usually the ones which are the easiest to implement. And I'll go into a bit more detail regarding those. So if you go into the show more option, you go into the entire su suggestion portfolio. And these are categorized in two main areas, uh, user impact and implementation cost. And then in the subcategories, like which one does it affect? Does it affect identity? Uh, does it affect Azure AD or something else? But the user impact and the implementation cost are the ones we're most interested in. The idea, generally speaking, is to go, over, go for the low-hanging fruit first. So you go for the ones which have the least amount of user impact, the least amount of implementation cost, so that you can start making huge gains initially and then when you go into diminishing returns, you can start focusing more on more niche uh, suggestions. Again, uh, different organizations might have different priorities. And this allows you to filter that as well. So if you want to focus your security posture on data or identity, you can filter by data or applications as well. So let's go into one particular uh, suggestion. So the one is require MFA for Azure AD privilege roles. So we clicked up and the flyout comes out. Actually on that side. Uh, so it gives you a description, uh, what the impact is and other details as well. Let's go into a, a bit more detail about that. Let me move to one side. So this is the description. So it describes what this policy is and what's the impact of that will be. So which identity, which category does it lie in, what the user impact is, what the implementation cost is. And then you can go into the next steps. Now this is like one of the cool features about this. A lot of times you're dealing with a feature you might not have dealt with before and you might not be sure of how to implement it. Here it gives you a step-by-step -step procedure on how to do so. And it uh, also gives you a certain compliance control. So if you implement this feature, you will satisfy these uh, compliance controls. And the lastly, you can add notes. But another important feature is uh, this one. So resolve to third party. So suppose you're using other applications in your suit as well, and you're using them to, uh, so say you're using another application for MFA. So you solve the security hole, but in the secure score, obviously it hasn't picked up because it's picking up Microsoft devices. So you can do resolve to third party. Currently in preview, there will be another option here, resolve to other remediation. So if you didn't use a third party, but you have a workaround in place or whatever, and you believe that it's okay for your organization, you should be able to choose it and take it off. Okay, this is a risk that was there, and then we've ha had a workaround for this one. Another thing as well, so uh, in the view settings, uh, I completely forgot about this. Uh, it takes you the exact portal that you need to be um, implementing that policy in. So rather than going into Azure AD, into uh, different ones, going to conditional access, going into specific policy, that view setting will take you directly to that portal where the change needs to be made. And especially for new features which are coming in, where you don't exactly know where they are, this is a pretty good way of going directly to where the change needs to be made. Microsoft are like, trying to get all their portals in one place, but still, there's a fair bit of portals right now. And as I said before, you can have the ability to filter them according to your particular needs. And you're also able, also able to export the, these suggestions, um, just the filtered ones or the all overall ones into a CSV, if you need to import it into a project plan or whatever else. So the last one is the history. So you can see the entire history, of, as I mentioned before, uh, of your secure score over the last 30 days, the 90 days, or a longer period of time. An important thing to notice here is that there are three different lines here. 
So the top one, and the purple line here, is your security score. The ones two, the two lower ones are the important ones. So this maroon one is basically the average security score of similar organizations of similar seat size. And the cyan one in this case, which I don't think is accurate, uh, it would be the global average. So this allows you to compare how you're uh, working against other organizations of the similar size and if you're on schedule, if you're doing better than expected, and so on and so forth. And again, you can change different filters here. You can change the time. You can go over scores at particular days. And you can see a history of the recent improvements and what impact it had on the score. So if you made a change, you can see the impact it has. This only updates uh, every 24 hours. So if you made a change right now, it will probably be reflected in the portal tomorrow, so not today. And that's pretty much uh, Microsoft Secure Score. Uh, there's quite a few different things coming out. So as I mentioned before, in the flyout, currently there's uh, an option to go to interview settings and uh, to uh, say that, okay, this has been resolved by a third party. Now they're adding an action plan as, as well. So say this is an item that you want to look into. You can say, okay, we have something planned for this. Or we've taken notice of this and we're willing to accept this risk. So you can say we've, take, we've accepted this risk close this off as well. Uh, so yeah. Uh, and as more and more uh, software uh, features come, are linked into the Microsoft uh, suit, they're being integrated there as well. And that gets added into the total secure score. So from one place, you have a top-down view of everything else.